welcome back to Rough Talk VR. Dive into your weekly dose of in-depth game reviews, exclusive developer chats, and the freshest scoop on MetaQuest and the VR universe. Today, we're in good hands with the dynamic father-son duo D-Scruffles and Stratus, ready to decode and discuss all things virtual reality. Hey, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. Today, we got another fun interview with you for never, you today. Yeah. Never a dull one. No, and this one's a real special one. You know, today we're joined with Doug Northcook. He's the CEO and creative director of Creature, a new game studio that also says it's a label. You've got a nice fund with SideQuest started for, for indie developers. So looks like you're touching on a lot of different aspects of the VR industry. So, Doug, do you want to tell our listeners a little bit more who you are and what exactly Creature is? Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm Doug Northcook. Uh, I've been working on things uh, inside of VR for a little over a decade now. Um, started out like uh, working on some stuff on the original Oculus DK1, uh, which one of, one of my friends got from the original Kickstarter. Um, and then uh, spent some time working in academia. I was a, a university professor for seven years, uh, focused on immersive design uh, and ran a university program at Chatham University here in Pittsburgh, where I live um, for, for a few years, um, an undergraduate program focused on immersive technology. And uh, while I was there, I was consulting with a lot of large companies on games, immersive social experiences, um, research projects, training and simulation projects. Um, and then a couple of years ago, a friend of mine, uh, Callum Underwood, who was one of the early developer relations people at Oculus, um, he had started a company called Robot Teddy, um, which was supporting indie game studios inside and outside of VR. Um, and I went there and um, left left my role at the university to go and become head of VR at Robot Teddy, um, where we partnered with Shell Games and Inner Sloth to release Among Us VR at the end of last year, um, which was m mildly successful. Uh, and we also supported the release of The Last Clockwinder uh, last year there as well. Um, and then I also funded and worked with... Uh, Squido Studio, the team that uh, built No More Rainbows, which came out middle of this year. Um, so I was there. I was working on a bunch of different projects. That was all very exciting. But then I had this idea for a mixed reality game that I wanted to make. Um, and this was like last summer. I went around to a few friends of mine, um, some of the some of the like old school VR folks, people. Mark Schramm from the Super Hot VR team and Ashley Pinnock from the Tilt Brush team, Chris Haney from Space Pirate Trainer. Um, and the, the the list kind of goes on and on of pe people working on some of the best uh, kind of like original first wave VR content that kind of defines a lot of the design language that people use for a lot of VR games now, you know, a lot of that kind of foundational content and um, went around to all of them and I was like, listen, I've got this idea for an MR game I want to make. And I would love for us to work together to try to find some similar definitions that we all kind of worked on for early VR projects and try to bring that into the MR space. Um, and so we formed a new studio, which is called Creature, um, to work on that project. Um, but also simultaneously, uh, when I had left Robot Teddy, I had had a handful of studios that had reached out to me asking if we could support them with some of the work that they were doing. And so we spun up a, a secondary part of our of our business that that creature is both a game studio where we're producing our own games. Um, and then we also run a game label, um, which is not like a normal term in the in the games industry. Um, but it's starting to be seen like a little bit more. So we're kind of like somewhere in between um, being completely alone as a developer studio and working with a publisher. We're kind of like something in, we're like a different thing. Um, and so we're working with those studios on a lot of different things from business development and working with them to kind of manage their relationships with some of the major platforms, release strategy, some design and production advising. 
Um, and so we work with Neat Corporation, who makes budget cuts, Garden of the Sea, uh, Funktronic Labs, who made the Light Brigade, Fuji, um, Thomas Van Bowell, the creator of Cubism, who's also working on Laser Dance. Um, those are our like current publicly announced partner studios that live under our label. Um, and we've got four others that are also signed uh, that we'll be announce, announcing later this year. Um, that's most of it. Uh, that's most of like what, what Creature is, kind of where it came from, uh, how I got started in all of this. Um, so that's that catches us most of the way up. Yeah, there's a, a lot to comment on there. You know, that's quite the background. Some some of the top selling games. You yeah, I was going to comment on that. Among Us is always in the top, what, three, if not if not higher it's the best yeah. yeah yeah and the last last clockwinder one of one of the top games of last year you know some some really good good games I, I, we had a great time playing that yeah and yeah. let's look at the ones that you've scooped up for a creature the light brigade that's one of the best releases of 2023 mm-hmm. you know cubism that's a great game and are you going to work with them a bit for laser dance as well oh yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> i'm so excited for For that one, you know, when he first showed footage of it, the concept of it for a mixed reality game, you know, there's from what I've gathered from the videos, I haven't played it yet, but it looks like there's buttons on the walls that shoot lasers all over your living room or whatever room you're playing in. You have to dodge those lasers lasers and make it to the other button to to click it to shut it off. It's such a kind of simple concept, but I'm so, so hyped for that. So, yeah, well, that's what Tom Thomas Van Thomas Van Bowell, who's the creator of Cubism, he he has this really unique approach uh, to making games that I think does exactly what you just described, which is that it's very simple conceptually, but it's very elegantly implemented. Um, and that like cubism is, you know, it's one of the top 20 all time rated VR games. Um, and like when you see it, it's like, Oh, this is a very simple concept right but it's executed (laughs) perfectly and i think that's like it's why we love we love working with thomas because he has this this way of approaching making these sorts of experiences that is so exceptional and so rare um almost no developers or studios are kind of in it to go to that level of like meticulous detail and care that leads to these really really special kinds of ideas so yeah we're we're also very excited for laser dance it's one of one of the things that our team uh like we play it on a pretty regular basis because it's actually like a really great like ongoing uh process to see unfold so and he was posting footage of that i mean way back i don't even the quest pro wasn't even out yet i mean he's always been on the ball with hand tracking and pass through so huge props to thomas we've actually had him on the show before yeah. as well very say he's a really cool guy and are you able to talk a bit more about <clears throat> the game or games that you have in development in-house you know you, you referenced a, a mixed reality one i don't know if you're ready to talk at all about what that is uh i wish i could um but <laughs> yeah we're not we're not quite ready to to show it um but but i th- what i can say is that like what what we are really trying to hit with that project is is kind of what I described earlier is like, we want to really try to go all the way down into what makes mixed reality meaningful. Um, And it's a very similar kind of exercise that I feel like Thomas is doing with laser dance, which is looking for a game concept, uh, which I think we've found that is uniquely better because it's in MR. Um, And I think that's like a very difficult thing to find, which is like, a lot of like what is on the Quest 3 right now, there are a few a few exceptions for sure, but most of what's in there now is, you know, MR modes that are adaptations of pre-existing VR games, which that can be cool, but that's not like what I would say is like a, you know, a true mixed reality experience. Um, and I think it's kind of similar to some of the translation that we've seen from like someone who ports a like 2D game into a VR game. I think we're seeing a little bit of that now of like people porting their VR games into MR spaces, mostly just by like removing some of the environment and replacing it with your room. But I don't think that's necessarily like a very compelling, like MR use case. Um, 
for certain games, I totally, totally get it. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting to kind of see who keeps trying to kind of like push that boundary. So, but, but yeah, we'll have more to share sometime uh, in the next few months here. So, yeah. I'm I'm excited to see what it is. Yeah, we were skeptical on mis- mixed reality <clears throat> uh, blowing up the way that now I believe it can. You know, we had enjoyed it a bit on the the Quest Two infrared cameras, but there's definitely a barrier there with the black and re- black and white and everything. But for day sure, one owning owning the Quest Three, you do that first encounters demo that comes with the headset, and you know you see the the furry things, you know, hiding behind your table. You know, you see it interacting with your environment, and it's yeah, I'm sold. And like even we've been playing Demio in pass through because sometimes my girlfriend she'll be watching TV. Maybe I want to watch a little bit of what's on the TV too, right? But now I can play Demio and still consume that. Yeah, but that I'm, too. I'm very curious what. Oh yeah, because it what, sounds like they're up to. Yeah, like it, this is a true mixed, mixed reality, reality game. So I'm yeah experience. I'll I'll call it. I guess. Yeah. So I'm I'm super excited to see what you Why? have coming in house, and it really sounds like you've gathered an A team of people to work in creature. So how many people are there in total as part of the team right now? Oh, that's a great question. I think we're at like 16, something like that. And what side do you kind of depends on the day <laughs> <laughs> and what side seems to be bigger right now, the side of, that you're putting resources into making your in-house stuff, or has it been more of the label side that's really blown up more? Oh, this, the, the studio is where the majority of our team kind of lives. Um, and then there's a little bit of a little bit of overlap. We've got a couple of people who work focused just on just on the game label. Um, and and like the label also includes um, the the partnership that we have with SideQuest as well, where we're where we, we are now starting to fund games um, and then also bring some of the kind of support that we provide uh, through our label to studios, um, and that's been that's been going really really well. Um, but all of that is managed by by a pretty small team um, and me. So like I'm very involved um, in in both sides of of what we're doing. Um, but yeah, yeah, and you know, I guess just organically go into it. Do you want yeah, to say a little? This is pretty exciting. Yeah, when I heard news of this, I was like, this is the stuff I love to see in mm-hmm. VR. And I, I saw maybe now, what was it, two months ago, uh, a, a press release that you were starting a indie fund of a million dollars with SideQuest to give out funding and, and advice and, and consulting and stuff like that for, for studios. Yeah. So do you want to say a little bit more about how that works? If, example, you're an indie developer, you're like, all right, I want to apply. I want to try to take advantage of this. What's what's the deal with, totally. with this fund? Totally. Um, yeah. It, so this came out of a, a, a conversation with the, the side quest team where they really wanted to find some new ways to try to support the types of developers that I think have found a lot of success on their platform. Um, and, and also because like the funding landscape has really changed like in the last couple of years, both as like the economy has really changed um, and like venture capital and some investors are like very kind of torn and distracted between like spatial computing and AI um, with AI being like where so much of the investment is focused right now. Um, But also that like, from my perspective, the majority of people funding VR games over the last several years have gotten it wrong um, because there is this pervasive perspective that all VR needs is some big IP or some AAA studio to make something of the scale of Skyrim that runs on Quest. Um, And I think really what we've seen for the last decade is that that is a lie. (laughs) It is like, it is such an incredible farce um, that that is the thing that A, users want and B, that that's like what the medium is actually good at. Um, And I think really what we've seen is that like the games that are successful, the applications that people are drawn to are things that mostly revolve around a single incredibly polished core mechanic with an incredibly high skill cap. Um, 
and that almost all of those things are made by incredibly small teams, at least initially. And then they kind of grow from there. Right. But like you look at that under like, right, like Blade and Sorcery, um, Bone Lab, Gorilla Tag, Beat Saber, Super Hot, these things that really when you boil them down, they have like one thing that they do incredibly well and that everything else is just like content stacked on top of that. Um, and that most of those titles, or at least originally, are made by teams of like less than five people. And in some cases made by like one or two people. Um, and that those are the majority of the top selling and best performing VR games. And that most of the big IPs and the much, much larger budget titles tend to fall very flat. Um, and that's because they miss this core thing, which is like that people want to jump into an experience immediately have like a fun moment or an exciting interaction with another user. And they should be able to like wrap up their initial session in like 20 minutes. Um, and that that's like the majority of way that people interact with the medium is like short, high intensity bursts um, or like smaller casual things. And then there's like, there's a ton of other space for a lot of other kinds of experiences for sure. Um, but what we wanted to do was find a way to fund people that we think really understand the medium and right. They don't need $5 million or even in some cases, they don't even need a million dollars in like total production budget to take a really good kind of core idea and translate it all the way to a, to a commercial release. Um, and so really what we've been looking for is studios who have something that is um, a like primal magic of sorts uh, that like I would put like Beat Saber and Super Hot into like that category of like there's something like so powerful about the raw experience of playing those things um, that because they tap into either some sort of like core human fantasy or they just like invite you into this embodied flow state and like a different way of being that just kind of immediately feels good. Um, and again, it's like short sessions. So, um, so yeah, we've been, so we've already, we've, we're getting pretty close to receiving like 200 submissions to the fund um, just in the last month, um, which is pretty wild. It was way more than we were expecting. Um, but I would say of those, almost none meet like the very specific criteria of what we're looking for. Um, which I would say like generally is, does this game have the potential to be a top five rated in its category title? That's like my first filter is like, is this one of the best things in this category? Or like, could it be one of the best things if they had more money, more support, and it could be kind of steered in the right direction? Um, and then it's like, can this only be done in VR? Um, and sometimes the answer to that question is no. And sometimes that's okay. Um, like Super Hot's a great example, which is like the core gameplay there, like isn't just about being in VR, but it is better <laughs> in <laughs> VR. Um, and and then they also have to meet like some kind of very specific budget criteria because at least for this initial fund, like we have a million dollars um, and a million dollars doesn't go very far in the mm -hmm. grand scheme of like game production budgets. Um and so, you know, we're not going to fund like 20 or 30 games uh, out of that fund. We'll probably end up funding a few um, and we'll kind of see where it goes. So, but the, the goal there is really to, to create a funding model that puts developers in a really advantageous position, keeps them in control of their intellectual property um, and brings multiple really good partners um, to the table so that they have kind of like a better support layer than they would in almost any other scenario. Um, and, and that's been going well. So we're already in conversations with a couple of, couple of studios that we may end up funding. Um, and that's super exciting. Um, I honestly wasn't even sure if we would find any from the submissions because when I was, when I was funding games at, at Robot Teddy last year, cause we also had a fund. I probably looked at, almost as many games as we've been looking at this year. Um, and we really did find, 
we, we didn't find almost anything to fund out of actual submissions. Almost everything that we, that I funded there was either like an intro from someone that we knew or was something that I just found. Um, in a couple of cases, like there was one game I found last year that, that we had offered funding to that, um, I had just seen the app lab page for this demo that this developer put up. I don't even know like how I found it. It was just like open in a browser tab when I like got back from lunch one day and I was like, I don't know anyone who knows this person. I've never seen it online anywhere. This game looks horrible in video, but there's like something in the core, the core like base gameplay that I saw in the video that I was like, I need to get in headset and like confirm whether or not this is one of the most genius things that I've ever seen. And then I got in headset and it was like, oh, this is like one of the best core mechanics I've seen in a long time. Um, and and that that project is now fully funded and will be I don't know, announced at some point in the next few months, come out later next year. Um, but it really is like, it's like diamonds in the rough, you know, it's like, you really got to like dig down and like know how to inspect things to know whether or not they are that thing. And I'm definitely like not always right. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I, I think I do have like a, a unique perspective um, on kind of like how this all works. So it's definitely more quality than quantity. Um, yeah, no, for sure. For I'm, sure. I'm just, I'm happy that there's such a strong vetting process and it's not kind of like everyone, you know, who meets a minimum criteria is getting <laughs> yeah, a yeah, piece no. of the pie. No, <laughs> no it's way. Like you're, you're, no way. You are looking for that, that true diamond that you, and, and you know, look, some people are good at, at finding. And like you just pointed out something that in the state you saw, it was not probably the, the best looking thing, but it had that something special that, you know, will work. So yeah. it's worth investing in. I'm sure being unique is important too. You know, it's yeah, it's hard something to do new to the table. Another rhythm game or <laughs> another multiplayer shooter isn't always the most convincing thing. But you know, there's some genres that still aren't too touched in VR. You know, like heavy duty survival games or I, you know, honestly, even top down strategy games. Are, I'm a big sp- fan of like Perespera, Eternal Starlight. All those work really good, and it's still a a medium of of the genre of the a VR that's not touched too much. So no, I love the the mentality on it. And just to go backwards a bit, did you have any background in the gaming industry prior to VR or was virtual reality your introduction into the gaming industry? No. Yeah, that was, that was my intro. Um, like I was, I used to, I, I had a, des- a digital design company. Uh, so we were doing interactive software and web development and some like digital like large scale installations. And my, this friend of mine got the Oculus DK one and I tried it at his house. And I was like, what is this? (laughs) Uh, And I was just like, whatever this is, I do this now. Um, And so I, I literally, I like went to my team and I was like, we're, we're done. Uh, We're not doing websites anymore. I'm not doing any of this anymore. And I basically like shut down my company and started teaching myself Unreal Engine and started making prototypes on the, that was by then that was like almost DK2. Um, and that was how I got into it. It was just like, I, I basically just like burned all of my money in a giant pile for four years um, because like nobody was, nobody was making VR back then. And also like we, I worked on a a very early steam VR game um, that I think was like one of the first hundred published on steam Steam VR, but it was like me and a friend of mine. And we spent two years making this thing. Neither of us had ever made a video game before. Um, And it was fine. It was like a pretty good tech demo, um, which was most of the things at that time. Um. But yeah, I really just like, I saw it and I wanted to do it. And so I just dove all the way in and I haven't really like come back up for air since then. I've just been going like deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, And I think at this point it's like, I would say like, I am a, I'm incredibly reluctant uh, engineer and like computer programmer. Um, It's not like the thing that I necessarily enjoy spending all of my time doing but i did do that for quite a while 
Um, and now like really, I think what I've kind of uncovered is like the thing that I really want to be doing and am really focused on now is like trying to facilitate as much work as possible. Um, and I, I think part of that is that like, when I looked around, I saw the, the way that all the way that the platforms in some cases approach like supporting projects, publishers, and what studios, like where the industry was trending, I had just seen like so much of the investment and so much of the focus of those companies kind of like miss the things that make me excited about the medium. And so, um, so now we're just really trying to like exert as much force in that direction as we can, um, which is to like make experiences and things that we think are like very playful and fun um, and are not about like trying to trap people in VR <laughs> for like dozens of hours a day or a week, whatever, you know? Um, and, and are also like, I don't know, are about like using the medium for what it is. Um, and it's surprising to me sometimes how like unconnected a lot of like people are to like what this technology could be. Um, I think there are, of course, a lot of companies that are just like trying to make money uh, and trying to like fast follow on trends. And I think for us is like we we still think that there's so much more room to explore, so much more room to like discover new ways of playing um, kind of broadly. Um, and that's really what we're interested in is not just like, oh, can we like rehash some really great game concept or idea, but can we support people that are making things that are almost unclassifiable um, or are just like a discovery of a completely new idea. So, which is again, like, like what Thomas is doing with laser dance is totally that, which is like, can I turn any environment in the entire world into a game level in like an adaptive reactive way? It's like, that is very new. It's very, very, very new. Right. And like, it is a thing that has not been done yet. Um, and when you play it, you're like, yeah, this, it feels good. It's fun. And it's a completely new kind of experience. Um, and yeah. And I think that's where we're like, we want to go to that kind of level, that kind of like first principles layer of like, what is unique about this? What has not been done and how can we, how can we invite other people and support other people that want to kind of do some of that work? So. Well, the passion for VR is undeniable. <laughs> you put on a headset, cash in your company, tell all the people who are now doing VR. Yeah, no, I'm... And and the amount that you're willing to actually give back to the, you know, trying to help people who are truly have a great product. I mean, you obviously have a knack for being able to see, th and like I had mentioned before, see through the... Yeah, well, and let's see the results from this fund. I've I have a feeling if we're going more quality, uh, it's going to be insane. I can already tell, and I love that. Oh, you're you're, you're going to love it. You're going to love. You're going to love it. So when we start announcing these first couple of things, like people are going to freak. I think so. Well, that's what it needs. The industry needs somebody to prove that something can get done before other mm -hmm. people will go. Okay, now I'll. Like, it's still a risky market. I mean, it's a. You look at Ghost of Tabor, there wasn't, I mean, there's other shooters, but there's not an extraction based survival shooter in VR. Yeah. And then there is, and it blows up. And it's like, well, that's a concept that works so good flat screen. Well, people want new experiences. Yeah. With not just all the rinse, wash, repeat. And 100%. So for yourself, is there, you know, what are your favorite genres in VR? Or is it kind of hard to put a label on because it's so, you know, you like the games that are more unlabelable that's a great question i mean for me yeah like like i i was so happy when we ended up working with uh with pontoko the last clockwinder team last year because they i i loved it the first time i played like the, an early version of it and it's exactly the kind of thing that i wanted to see um which is it's the kind of i like i like playing things in vr where i don't uh, part of it is like, I don't like feeling like I'm under pressure. <laughs> so honestly, like a lot of times, like shooters, especially like, like ghost of Tabor is like, it's honestly, it's just like too stressful for me. Um, where like the last clock winder is like, I kind of just want to like have a cup of coffee and like have a straw 
and like an iced coffee and like walk around and like think about the contraption that I'm building. And I think for me is it's less about like what kind of game and more like the way that I feel when I go to those places. So like the tree and the last clockwinder, it's like a place that I like spending time. Um, so like last year, like I spent a lot of time just like going back in and like tweaking some of the levels because it was just a place that I wanted to be. Um, I think similarly, like there's this, there's this amazing experience that's still live now on steam. It's only ever been on steam. Um, that's called the museum of other realities, which is this amazing thing. And this is like one of the things that I think is like one of the biggest missed opportunities in VR is that the, the more the museum of other realities was, uh, originally conceived by, uh, Colin Northway and, and a few other people around him and some digital artists as a, an attempt to see if it was possible to make a museum experience that was like native to VR as a medium. Um, and so they commissioned all of these original VR artworks that they then like installed in a single unity project that was fully multiplayer. Um, and some of the like these like interactive art installations that live inside of there are like better mechanically than so many of the like mid tier VR games, like full games that exist. Um, and that was like a very imaginative and interesting approach on something that felt kind of like metaversey, um, which was like, can we create a, a meaningful place where people want to spend time together? And I think they answered that question in like a very profound and unique way. They just answered it way too early um, and in a way that couldn't easily translate to the quest because all of the artwork that had been built was really only meant to run on PC VR. Um, but it's still one of these experiences that's just like full of magic and wonder and awe um, and is a way of like experiencing art that can't happen in the real world. Um, which again, is like the thing that I'm always kind of looking for is like experiences that I can't have in the real world are, are the kinds of things that I want to go and and do, um, in VR. And I still just play a ton of walkabout mini golf, uh, <laughs> as a lot of people do, because it's the only thing that my friends who don't work in the industry play. Um, like I have a lot of friends now who don't work in games, don't work in VR, who have gotten headsets over the last two years and like they want to play walkabout mini golf. So I, so I do that. And that's always great. Um, because they, they've created, again, it's like, they've just created some really wonderful places to spend time. Um, and like their social layer on top of it is just so perfect. So. Yeah. One of our favorites. Yeah. The, the team at walkabout, all of them, those we've, crazy we've coconuts. Talked to a hand, yeah. A handful of them. And they're all just over yeah, the top. Awesome. They're lovely. They're incredibly lovely people. Um, and they make a very lovely product. Yeah. But who would have, who would have thought, I mean, I didn't think it before getting into VR that <clears throat> mini, mini golf would be one of my all time greatest go to's for a good social experience and some fun. Po- I never would have thought it, but it, it's, it is. And yep. anybody who tries it by hole three, you get it. You're like, all right, <laughs> this is, this is magical. Yeah, it's you a great experience. Friends. It's, I mean, it's this so is, much fun. <clears throat> this is a question I ask myself a lot that, that gets to what you just said, which is like, I wouldn't have expected mini golf. Right. Um, and so a lot of times, like when I'm looking at a game, trying to evaluate something <clears throat> either for funding or for a studio, we want to sign to the label or even like my own ideas, um, is like, am I wrong about this? Um, cause a lot of times like we'll see a game and it's just like, had it, like I, this is not, it's not expected, right? It's like a type of play or a genre or something that we haven't really seen before or something where the scale feels really limited. And I think if you had said to me like, oh, yeah, a few years ago, like mini golf in VR is going to be huge. I'd be like, I don't know about that. Right. But like, I think that's a big part of this is like, it really is about like, we really don't know. Like we really don't know a lot about what users are going to resonate with and what the medium excels at. But I think again, with something like walkabout is like the thing that is evident there is the, the care that they take 
in building the thing that they are making and that they have a very, uh, they have like people on their team that have a knack for getting to that level of polish and detail and like raw game feel that just feels right. Um, and that's just an exceedingly difficult thing to do. Um, Cause like there are so many games and especially now so many VR games that just don't feel right. They just don't feel good enough um, because getting to that, that type of gameplay that just feels awesome in VR, like you feel it with your whole body is like, it's just, it's just very hard. And a lot of people just, they haven't, they haven't like done enough reps yet to be able to get there or they don't have the right team composition or in a lot of cases, they just don't have the time um, to be able to polish it. Um, but that's really what's like necessary. Um, and it's just so hard to achieve. And it's also, you know, there's gamers are diverse. So it's like, you know, you mentioned Ghost of Tabor is a little too high paced or high, a little too, too much. A little uh, stressful. Yeah. A little, yeah. <laughs> a lot of fast paced thinking going on, but there is a lot of people that love that. And then on the other side, <clears throat> there's walkabout mini golf. Mm -hmm. You have among us VR, totally different style yeah. of game but there's one common thing among us causes me anxiety <laughs> yeah getting chased. i always i'm always not to go off course but i'm always the first accused and i'm never the guy and, <laughs> but i'm always voted out first round all the time it's like that well, sounds I, like it's about you yeah he's not always think. the best about cut people <laughs> you would think. be like he'll be like hey i found somebody dead they'll be like well where'd you find him he's like oh, i don't remember where the name of it on the map out i didn't instantly even have, i didn't even know yeah instantly up yeah, uh, sounds untrustworthy. No, right? uh -huh, he sounds very <laughs> sus. Very <laughs> sus. Sketchy once he's in the hot seat, even if it's not him. Oh, um, but if there's one common thing that you see in in most of the the popular VR games, whatever the genre is, you know, Ghost of Tabor, Walkabout, Mini Golf, Among Us, Breachers, it's that social VR aspect, and I think that that's important. Is I didn't think that going into VR, but people like to spend time with other players, you know, I, when I was a flat screen gamer, I, I was completely single player. I did not want to deal with multiplayer. I'm not good competitively in gaming, you know? So I didn't think that I would want to deal with other people with a headset on, but then here it is. And that's pretty much the majority of what we play is multiplayer. Mm, multiplayer. And yeah. then you do get these great single player games. Like you mentioned a lot, last clockwinder. That game yeah. was awesome. One of the best games of last year. You <laughs> that know? game was awesome. You have Genotype, Red Matter 2. I mean, come on. That that won our game of the year last year. So, I mean. Yeah, incredible. It's well, I think that. that's, I think that, again, like to your point, like I think, you know, people that didn't, f that don't find multiplayer compelling on other platforms, I think can find it compelling mm -hmm. in VR because it's just, it's just a fundamentally different kind of experience. Um and I think similarly, a lot of people that play multiplayer games don't play a lot of multiplayer VR because they find it uncomfortable and uncanny um, and they don't want to be there, <laughs> um, uh, which I totally understand that as well. Right. And I think it really does mean there there will continue to be this really broad range of, you know, solo, you know, co-op only with friends and like full multiplayer kinds of experiences. Um, and I think we're really kind of just starting to see the first real wave of that like now. And I think we'll see a lot more of it in the next couple of years as people have are trying to tap into the, the multiplayer concurrency that gorilla tag among us, VR chat walk about um, and like among us gym class. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like there's so many now, like the list is getting pretty long and there's a lot of users now that are spending a lot of time in these, these really great social applications. And I think what well, I think a lot of people are like excited about that, but it's also like, we're going to see a lot of really bad uh, social <laughs> VR games and apps come out over the next couple of years, because people are chasing the success of some of those titles. And we're already seeing so many clones of a lot of those. So. Yep. And that something to touch on that was brought up earlier. And I'm actually so happy you said it because we talk about it all the time is a triple A studio will come into the VR space and the mentality is, is it's going to be this great polished product. And then I can name more than once where we've been let down on, you know, something that should have come out and been like fantastic and it's not, and they got this 
you know, huge empire behind them of finance. And then you have a two development team, like two people, like gods of gravity, less than five people. Yeah. We've, we've talked to so many developers and we always ask how big is your studio? Yeah. And more often than not, especially like, you know, a year ago, year Mm -hmm. and a half, the under 10 is like some of the best, some of the sweet spot we've always Mm -hmm. said is like under 12 or 10, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. So yep. there's definitely something big it's to incredible. that. And I think it's important for developers to to be unique too, because there's no consistent, you know, it's just shooters that work or it's, you know, you look at a game like bo- Bocce Time. That's mm-hmm. a great multiplayer game. It just has that it feel. Gods of Gravity, you're top down doing more real-time strategy, multiplayer, and it works good. A shooter, walkabout, mini golf, they're all vastly different genres but they're all hitting that same social checkbox that makes the game fun, replayable, Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, it's interesting. Yeah. There's, there's not an exact, you know, in terms of this one genre is going to be successful. It's more about your feel, how you feel playing it. And just to go back to the fund, you know, before we wrap this, this all up, is it only for new games? Like example, is it, the time for somebody to apply to that is that when they're still developing it or can a game that's already released uh, apply for the fund? Who, who exactly is the fund for? Um, it really depends. Like, again, I think, I think apart from like the, like the quality bar and like financial fit, like we don't, I'm not really, I'm not really filtering beyond that. So like we've had conversations with a couple of studios that are, like either already released or just about to release. And then we're having conversations with people that just have a pitch on paper, right? Like there's not even a playable prototype. Um, But I would say the other thing there is like the other question that I also ask is, can this person ship? Can this studio ship? Right. And like, there has to be some ability to like prove that out, which is like, if you just have something on paper, then you probably need to already have a released title, like a fully released title that lives at our quality bar. So we can look at it and be like, oh yeah, no, we know. Or Mm -hmm. you were like the lead engineer on a title like that, right? Um, So it really just depends, but it's really just like, it's really about finding the the right fit, finding people that really get it. And then from there is like, it doesn't matter like where, where you are, what the situation is. Like if we can, if we can help, but also if we can find like a, a verifiable pathway that we think uh, we can actually like get our money back. <laughs> Cause that's part of it too. It's part of like the reality of all of this is that like the, the real path forward here. And, and this is where also like a lot of people and a lot of studios kind of like miss this layer of it is like building something that has like a reasonable commercial future and like a long-term commercial future. Um, and so that's part of it too. It's like there, there's a few games that we've looked at where I'm like, this game is great. It's beautiful. Like mechanically, I understand it. It's from a studio that like, right. They have experience. They maybe already have a title out, but it's like, this game just doesn't feel right. It's just like, it either doesn't feel right or it's like, I know exactly how many copies this is going to sell, which is not enough for us to ever make our money back and not enough for this studio to like make it work. But they're just like, I think there has been like a, like a type of game that kind of like fits into that space. And sometimes those are games that I love, but I can't fund them because I know they're not going to make money. (laughs) Uh, Right. Which is a trick of actually having to like invest money is, you know, like there are certain things that I think could live above the quality bar, but if, if the category is too small or too niche, or we just know that like that category doesn't resonate with users, then it's, you know, not, not an easy fit. So, um, but yeah, the real answer to your question is like anyone and everyone, like if you hit up, if you hit above the bar and there's a clear fit and you can articulate that fit to us, then like you should shoot us an email or apply to the fund. Um, but also that like almost no one, meets those criteria. I think that's the, that's the like difficult part of all of this is like, what I wish is that me and my team had enough time to like sit down and have a conversation with all 200 people (laughs) who have applied to our fund and like have detailed conversations with them about like 
why we might not be selecting them. Um, the reality is like, we would just never be able to do any work if that's what we had to do. Um, but there really is, I think like remains a lot of, uh, perspectives on like the closed or open ecosystem, especially of like Meta's store. Um, and I think a lot of the loudest voices like in that discussion are people making the kinds of games that apply to what we're doing. And honestly, they just like don't hit above the bar. And I'm like, what you're working on is cool, but something like a cool idea doesn't translate into a commercially releasable title that can like pass QA and like is something that should be on like on the store and sold direct to consumers. Cause honestly, like a lot of times, like that's just not, it's just not where they should be. Like they can live in other places, but you know, a lot of people get very far uh, into like their own heads about the quality of what they're making. Um, and the reality is like, it's, there are not like 50 VR games a year that live above that bar. Like probably not even close. <laughs> um, and I hope that that number is going to increase, but it's just, it's just such a difficult thing to do. And there are a lot of people trying and there are a lot of people getting a lot better. So there are developers who I've seen who have come back around to like have conversations with me after they've either, you know, released something or moved on to a new prototype. And, um, and oftentimes that's where, that's where you find some of these things that are worth funding is where, you know, a studio is, or a developer has kind of moved through one or two like failed ideas or failed projects. Um, and then they arrive at something that has some of that magic and they have enough experience under their belt to actually like deliver on that magic. Well, whoever's getting the funding, you know, that the end product is going to be worthy of the funding. So, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm it's excited a, it's to see a win some top for everybody fives. around. So no, and and I could easily see the creation of creature consulting. <laughs> where, it's on, you know, because I mean, let's be honest, people they do need to get out of their own head as well. But mm -hmm. a well, lot of people would do better with you know some honest advice on what they could do to make their product better. But honesty is a uh, a sorely lacking <laughs> material, uh, and I think like it's really like how we try to operate is I don't know because I do I do still spend time and even with the fund like I've taken time to, to like do calls with developers that we are definitely saying no to but they are people who I think have some sort of there is something in the potential of what they're building that if it if they kept working at it like maybe they could get there right and sometimes I'm like I'll just do a call spend an hour with them and like give them the full honest perspective because most often they're not going to get that they're going to get like a polite no. And I wish I had the time to like do that for everybody, but, um, and sometimes like people are really receptive and then sometimes they are even able to then like come back and they're like, Hey, we took everything that you showed us. We incorporated it into the thing and now we're releasing on the full store. Um, and like that's happened a few times over the last couple of years where I've been able to kind of like help steer or guide at least like part of a project. Um, and sometimes that's all they need. And that's the other thing is like, you know, there are people that come to us for funding and I'm like, you don't need our money because like all you, all you need is this. You just need like, and sometimes it's like, you just need to like get an intro to the right person to like unlock something. You don't need us. You don't need to give us a percentage of what you're building. Like you just need like a help through the door. And like, that's, that's a thing that like doesn't need to cost anything if the thing is good enough. Um, but that's also the thing that everybody wants is <laughs> like everybody wants some <laughs> amount of like access. And again, it's like if you're not up to the bar, then like it's too expensive to like, you know, introduce you or fund you or whatever. Um, and that's the thing that is worth like trying to be honest with people about is like this thing you're making is cool, but it's just not ready. You know, that's awesome. Nope. I think that's fantastic. I love the philosophy of it. I love the the concept. I, I can't wait to see. It. Yeah, I can't wait to see the the execution now. So uh, before we let you go, you know, I think we've, we've held you hostage a little, little longer than anticipated. So All good. Uh, in case any developers, you know, they think that they meet that criteria, you know, how can they apply for the, the fund? That is uh, a great question. Um, you can go to our website, uh, which is creature.page. Um, and at creature.page, there's a little 
side quest X creature indie VR fund button that goes to a, a little form, uh, which is pretty straightforward, which is basically just like, tell us a little bit about your game and show us why it's as good as you say it is, um, which is usually like, send us a little pitch deck, send us some video, ideally send us a build of what you're working on. Um, and, and that's it. And then we kind of take it from there. So, and then we've also got like updates that live on our website and on our social media for projects we're working on some of the stuff that's coming out of some of our partner studios, um, which again, there'll be a lot more, uh, that we'll be announcing, uh, like in the next couple of months from, from some of our partners as well. So. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. Can't wait. So I'll throw the, the link for that in the show notes, the episode description. So in case anybody's listening, they go, well, that's me. They want to go apply. You know, you can well, do it the, there, but the no, next it's a diamond standard. is out there. Yeah. It just has to, you know. Oh, it's out there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, we, we like just found one. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. I, it's one of those ones. Like as soon as I, as soon as we saw it, we were like, oh, this is, this is a thing. Um, and then the other thing is like, sometimes it's like somebody doesn't bring us a diamond. It's like, we have a diamond idea and then we figure out how and who should be the ones to build it, which is like, oh, what if, what if this IP or this idea was made by this studio? Um, I think that's sometimes where some of the magic is as well as being able to like manufacture a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're trying to do a little bit of that too. Um, no, but you're, you're everyone that you're working with that are all creating opportunities for people and that wouldn't ordinarily exist if you weren't doing what you're doing. So, and to the standard, which I greatly appreciate. So. Already partnered with some great existing games. Like you said, light brigade, obviously some more coming. Cuts, yeah. cubism. I'm excited for laser dance, but I'm really excited to see what's yet to be announced both in house with your mixed reality game slash games, who knows, <laughs> as well as, you know, the, you know, you mentioned you just, you found a diamond, so I'm excited to see what else comes with this fund, and pretty confident we'll see some top fives in the respective genre hit your goal. But mm-hmm. let's see. I'm I'm excited for anything with with the creature label. So, yeah, thanks, guys. No problem. I think we could probably talk a, a couple hours just oh, easily. game <laughs> philosophy, especially with VR specifically. But you know, we'll save some time for another day. Yes, we steal people on Sundays, so sometimes it's a it's a little tough too. So thank you for taking the time out of your weekend to to talk with us, dog. For sure, there. we'll do it again. Yeah, that was a great interview. I'm excited to see, like I said, anything with the creature label that's yet yeah. to be announced. I'm Keep I'm waiting anxiously. Open. And, you know, for any any indie developers, if you think you're that diamond, definitely take advantage of a fun like this. So if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe, rate us five stars, and stay tuned for next week. Take ciao, care. ciao.